Hello, I'm Ronit Bird, and in this video I'm going to show you how I use empty number lines for addition and subtraction. Before I teach this method to my pupils, I make sure that the necessary pre-skills are in place. For example, in order to use an empty number line for bridging, we first need to know all the complements to 10, and to know how the same facts can be applied to larger numbers. We need to know all the components of the single digit numbers, that's to say how they can be built up or partitioned into smaller numbers. And there needs to be some understanding of place value in terms of how to add tens and units together. I also put off working with paper and pencil until I've done a considerable amount of work at the concrete level. Taking bridging as an example again, you can see how I use Quiznos rods to introduce the whole idea of bridging if you look at some of my earlier videos or my ebook on exploring numbers through Quiznos rods. I'll briefly show you what I mean by the pre-skills that I've just mentioned. Complements to 10 are the five facts that tell us how 10 can be built from two components. We need to know that adding, say, 2 to 28 will get us to 30, because 2 and 8 are complements of 10. And that the same fact tells us that any number, no matter how large, ending in 8, will need 2 to be added to reach the next multiple of 10. We also need to know how to build up and how to split up numbers into component parts. So, for example, the number 8 can be built or split into 4 and 4, or 3 and 5, or 2 and 6, or 1 and 7. These facts can be recorded both as addition and as subtraction facts, but notice how much easier it is to read the component facts when they were presented as dot patterns or as rods equations than when they're written out as number sentences. We need to know enough about place value to recognise that if we know that 8 can be built from 3 and 5, we must also know that 18 could be built from 13 and 5 or 15 and 3, or that 28 could be built from 23 and 5 or 25 and 3, and so on. Still on the subject of place value, we need to know how to build or partition two-digit numbers. For example, 55 can be split into 50 and 5, or 40 and 15, or 30 and 25, and so on. If you're working with a child who's not yet at this stage, there's no point rushing into paper and pencil work. The foundation skills have to be secure first and they've got to be really deeply understood and internalised. Let's now start. I'll start with an addition. 28 plus 8. My empty number line is just that. A straight line and a blank line. No numbers on it. I'm going to put 28 on the line wherever I please by marking a point on the line and labelling it below the line. The question directs me to add 8, and I know this will take me beyond the next decade boundary, because I know the complement facts, so I am going to use the bridging strategy to solve this addition. Here's my bridge, which is just a jump along the line to the next 10, or the next multiple of 10, which I know to be 30 in this case. I label the size of the jump, either above or inside the arc that I've drawn. Now, the question asks me to add 8, and I've added 2 so far, so I still have another 6 to add. 6 more than 30 is 36, so the answer to the question 28 plus 8 is 36. Let's try a harder sum in which we're adding two two-digit numbers. So my example is 46 plus 27. I mark 46 on the line and add 4 so that I'm bridging through 50. I'm now going to add all the rest of the second add end in one jump. It's really important to use as few jumps as possible on an empty number line. That's the whole point of using an empty number line and not a numbered line. If we don't do that, then at the end of the calculation there'll be lots of small additions still to do. Working properly on an empty number line 
means using an efficient method that is so simple and clear and easily visualised that after enough practice we'll be able to just imagine a number line and do simple calculations in our head. So how many jumps is too many? I'd say that if you need more than four jumps you should be using column arithmetic instead or a calculator. Here's an example where I would want to use three jumps. If we change the question to 46 plus 87, we now have a problem that would require carrying in both columns if we were solving it as a column addition. On an empty number line, it goes like this. First we bridge through the next multiple of 10, and then through the next 100. After adding 4, I know there's still 83 to add. I'll add 50 of it in one go to bridge through 100, which leaves 33 still to add. Now I'm going to show you some subtraction. Let me talk you through 13 minus 8. Here's my empty number line. Just to start with, I'm going to label the left end of my number line as 0. Now when I mark and label the point that represents 13, I have a defined length of line that we can see is worth 13 because it runs from 0 to 13. Out of the 13, I need to subtract 8. And so I'm going to scribble out a length of line that represents 8 and label the number 8 on my line. This is a very important step. I don't want to tell my pupils to start from the smaller number or to confuse them with rules about going left and right. I want them to understand what they're doing so it's really important that they can visualise the number 13 and that they can see where the 8 is being removed from the 13. Once this is clear it's obvious that the answer lies in the difference or in the gap between the two numbers which we can calculate in two steps. From 8 to 10 is a jump of 2, and from 10 to 13 is a jump of 3, and the answer is the gap between 8 and 13, which is 2 and 3 combined. At some point, whenever the child is ready, we can stop recording the zero and the scribbling out, and go straight to finding the gap between 8 and 13, working forwards on an empty number line. Let's take a look at a subtraction with two two-digit numbers. It's just as easy as before. I'm going to solve the problem 42 minus 25 as if the question were formulated as 25 plus what is 42? Whichever way we think of the question, the answer lies in the difference between the numbers. From 25, we bridge to the next multiple of 10, which is 30. And from 30, we jump all the way to the target number 42. The solution can be found in two steps of calculation. The kind of problem that would require decomposition if it were presented as a problem to be solved on paper in columns is always easier to solve on an empty number line. However, it's worth noting that the opposite is also true. So an easy column subtraction such as 45 minus 22, where no exchanging of tens is needed, is better solved in columns. When might we need more than two steps of calculation? Well, when we need to bridge through a hundred as well as through a ten. For example, 120 minus 36. Draw an empty number line, mark the two numbers, and find the gap between the two numbers by bridging. 36 and 4 is 40, from 40 to 100 is 60, from 100 we need a third jump to get to 120. The difference between the numbers is 84. For more information on dyscalculia and how to help children who struggle with numeracy, do visit my website www.runitbird.com.